In this SketchUp video, I want to talk about how you would go about creating something like a dining set, like I have here. Um, we're going to create the table and chairs separately. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about making them a component and uh, things like that. Okay, so here's about what our finished product will, will look like. So I'm going to go off to the side. And we'll get started. Maybe we'll get a little closer to the house here. Okay. So first we'll start with the table. And to do the table, I'm just going to grab a simple rectangle, start on the ground, and I think I'll make it 7 feet by 3 feet. So 7 feet comma 3 feet. Okay. Then I'll use the push-pull and bring it up maybe 2 inches. We'll make it 2 inches thick. Once I've done that, I am going to triple click on it to select it, and I'll just use the move tool and I will move it straight up the blue axis 30 inches. That's 30 inches, so that it's about 30 inches off the ground. It'll actually be a little bit tall for a table, but that's pretty good. So once I have this, I can come around to the bottom to put the legs on. I'm just going to make a very, very simple, almost like a Parson style table. Um, so I'm just going to attach and pull from the bottom. Uh, but if you're doing something fancier, you would probably want to, um, you know, group the top, create different legs, you know, put them on the bottom and that type of thing. But I'm going to keep this pretty simple. So to do that, all you have to do is come in with the rectangle. And I'm going to go to each corner and just do a 2 by 2 square, 2 inch by 2 inch in each corner. And then we'll use a push-pull to come down. Now the important thing here is to decide if you want that to be one continuous shape or if you hit control, remember that adds that seam, which considering how most furniture is made, you're probably going to want to do that. Hit the control key and I'll come down 30 inches, 30 inches, and notice as I'm doing this, while I stay in the function, that plus sign stays there. Okay, so it did that for all of them. So now here I have my basic table. Okay, and that would be fine. But of course, you could go in and embellish this a little bit if you wanted to. Um, I think on the other example, I simply used offset and offset the edge two inches and then used a push pull on that center portion and just brought it down um, 0.125, an eighth of an inch, something like that. But, you know, that's completely up to you. Um, if we wanted to have some sort of inset or that type of thing, that would make that very easy. Okay, so now we have the basic table in place. We can now uh, start creating some chairs. So it's going to be the same basic process, except we'll also have a back. So I'm going to grab a rectangle, and I'll make this one a lot smaller, of course. Maybe I'll do 18 by 18 inches. And I will do a push-pull up two inches. I will triple click on it to select it and move it straight up 18 inches. Okay. Then I'm going to do the same process by rotating or orbiting underneath. And I will grab my rectangle tool and once again, I'll just make two inch legs, although you could certainly get more creative here if you wanted to. I'll use my push pull, hit the control key, and make the legs 18 inches. So in a certain way, we basically have a mini table at this point. But now what we can do is use our rectangle, 
come across the back and create the back portion. So this will be 18 inches, comma, how about one inch? Might be a little thin, who knows. I'll use the push pull and bring that up maybe 24 inches. Okay, so um, that is of course a very straight up flat back, but that's all right. Once we have this, I mean, really, that could be your chair, you could be done, but we could use our tape measure tool to come in and add a little bit of detail. Okay, so I might grab that tape measure and come down from the back perhaps three inches, and then I'll bring another one down from there as well. There we go. Um, and I might, let's see, graduate that a little bit. So I did three, I'll do two and two, one, and one. Sometimes that tape measure tool can be tricky and you have to grab it again. I'm also going to come in one inch from each side. So they have a grid that's looking like this and you could, you know, do something else if you'd like to. Then I'm going to grab my rectangle and I'm just going to fill in some of these gaps. So I'm leaving the top portion up here and I'm actually going to use rectangles to cut out. So I grabbed one and put it there. I'll put one here and in this large section. Then I'll grab my push pull and I'm going to push those out. So it's one inch one inch and one inch all right so there is you know some type of chair okay and I have quite a few guides going on right now so I might just go up and say edit delete guides to get rid of all those if I wanted to put some sort of embellishment on the seat I could do that as well and I might just use that handy dandy offset tool on the seat so I could bring it in um, maybe one inch. And so we get something, you know, that looks like that. It's sort of mimicking that pattern in the back. And I could use the push pull to bring that seat up, maybe just a little, you know, just to, to give it some interest. In any event, once we've created the chair, we should keep in mind that this is still um, an ungrouped object so that it's all these individual pieces. Really to, to work effectively, what we're going to want to do is either group this or make it make it a component. In this case, I would really encourage you to select it all, right click, and not only make it a group, but make it a component. And um, you'll see why in a minute. But if, if you uh, create something like this and want to make a change to the chairs, for example, um, if you make it a component, it's easy to change all of the chairs instead of having to do them individually. So I'm going to make it a component. I will call it dining chair and I, I'm not going to bother with the description at this point although you certainly could and uh, I'm not going to face it towards the camera or anything like that. I'm going to leave everything else as it is but I am going to replace selection with component that would be a good thing to do and then I'll say create. Since I've gone through the effort of making the chair as a component I should probably just do the same with the table. I just selected it, right click make it component and I'll do dining table create just so that we're you know kind of on the same page with both of these and then what I'm going to do is just move this chair over and I'll just sort of eyeball that for speed sake here So I have one chair, then I can, using move and control, of course, make a copy. I'll move it straight through and I can use my scale to negative one to make a reverse of that. M for move and I'll just scoot that back. I will use move with control to make another copy. 
And remember when you've made something a group or a component, it's very easy to then go in and uh, rotate this. You don't have to worry about you know, selecting all of the parts or that type of thing. Uh, it's real easy. Oops. Just want to move this guy. Put one maybe about there. Copy another one next to it. We can shift select both of these. Copy it across. And then finally, we can use our scale the same way we've been doing to a negative one. And move that back out. And now you'll see that we have our dining set. So it's really the same steps repeated over and over again. Earlier I mentioned that making these components is really useful. Well, to point out why that is, if I was done creating my, my dining set and there was something about um, the chairs, for example, I wasn't happy with, if they're a component, I can make a change to one and they will all update. So if I select one of these, I can either double click on it or right click and say edit component, either way. I can come in and make some change to it. So perhaps I actually wanted to come in and I'll just, to keep it simple, use the push pull and I'll make the back taller. Notice if I zoom out here how I'm able to update all of them. So if I want to make that two inches taller, I would be able to update all of them instead of needing to go into each one and make an individual change. But that's really the basics of making some you know, very simple furniture and using the component function to your advantage.